reading the script, I thought it read extremely well as a story. The characters, when you're casting, you almost have to sort of, visual, I visualize actors playing those roles. And what David wanted from me was instincts on the English casting and the Indian casting. People knew that David Lean was going to be making another film and, and he'd chosen Passage to India as, as, uh, as the basis of his story. So, so you know, it, it, it was a book that immediately as a young actor you went out and bought and read and it came out to speed with. I think every actor in, in London wanted to be seen for, for it and I had great difficulty getting to be seen for it. He, David was th thinking of other people for fielding but I, eventually I got an interview. He, he wasn't that keen to, to meet me, but um, I did get the interview and uh, we got on terribly well. And almost there and then, I think he, uh, he wanted to have me. I was asked to go and meet him and uh, he said, sit down. And he said, what have you been doing? And I said, I've been doing um, The Jewel in the Crown. He said, oh, good, was that good? I said, yes, it's good, it's good fun. He said, Dum he said come here, have a look and uh, then marched me out onto his balcony at the Berkeley Hotel and sort of said, said, this is a great view, isn't it? It's a lovely, he said, I always stay in this suite. It's a lovely suite, lovely suite. He said, do you want some tea? Maybe, you probably don't have any time. Um, listen, um, have a script and uh, read it. Let us know, what do you think? All right, good, nice to have met you. Off I went, <laughs> read the script, I got told I had the part, and off I went. I get a call from my agent saying, would you go and have a cup of tea with David Lean in the Barclay Hotel? And I turned up and uh, I'd read the script, which I thought was fantastic, and uh, I went up to his suite and met his wife, Sandy, and uh, David said, did you write the script, old boy? And I said, I thought it was great. He said, would you like to play Ronnie? I said, I, 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 yes, please. Marvellous, he said have a cup of tea, and that was the audition. He, more or less, luckily, agreed with my instincts and was thrilled that I brought to him actors that he didn't know necessarily. They weren't necessarily film actors. Peggy Ashcroft, for instance, we had worked with, we'd been working with for 18 months on Jewel in the Crown, and I could not see anyone else playing that role. Madam? This is a mosque. You have no right here. You should have taken off your shoes. But I have taken off my shoes. I left them outside. It was a very interesting moment when we shot that because Peggy Ashworth had sprained her ankle and uh, we didn't think she'd be able to walk. She was pushed down a wheelchair, a great ceremony, everything else. But she didn't really like being told had to play a part. I mean, she was Mrs. Moore, and there wasn't any buts about it. There couldn't, we couldn't have cast anybody else, and that was it. And um, she, she just wouldn't be told anything by anybody. And so she just got out of the chair and did it, did it, did her part absolutely beautifully. And there you go. She got an Oscar for it. Cucumber. My dear. Life rarely gives us what we want at the moment we consider appropriate. Judy Davis, uh, I'm very, very glad she was cast. I thought she was absolutely wonderful because she had that sort of Australian toughness, which understated, but you know that she's got a lot of balls somewhere. And, and she, she, she does. I mean, she, she's very, very, very good. Uh, otherwise, I don't think she could have pulled off the thing in the trial where she says, I was wrong. I'm afraid I've made a mistake. What nature of mistake? Dr. Aziz never followed me into the cave. I, I mean, if, if it had been a sort of frail English beauty, I think it would have, would have, wouldn't have worked as well. I was amazed by that choice um, because she wasn't uh, British and very Australian. I'd never really worked with anyone quite like her, actually. Um, and. She's not, I mean, basically, she's not, um, she's not easygoing. I mean, she gets herself, you know, into the, under the skin of the part and becomes quite tricky to herself more than anybody else. And, and uh, I think David found her quite, quite tricky here and there. 
However, uh, she is a fabulous actress. I'm sorry to have been so difficult. Oh, I shouldn't worry. It's partly to do with this country and the odd surroundings. Do you mean that my, my bothers are to do with India? Funny thing was, they both got nominated, for, Judy got nominated for an Oscar. Not bad, really. And I think Peggy won one. So, um, he did them pretty proud, I thought. Ah, Godbelly. We didn't realize you were here. The sun will soon be driving us all into the shade. And I was enjoying the water. Alec Guinness was uh, devoted to, to David, but had this sort of slightly rocky road with him and in his interpretation of the part. And I think, in retrospect, if, if you were making the film now, you would never cast a, a white person to play an Indian person in, in, because it, it just wouldn't be accepted, I don't think. It was, I mean, everybody tried to persuade David not to uh, have Alec for this part. But he said, listen, I'm an old man, I want my friends around me. I think he needed somebody he could really rely on to do the stuff. Well, he always seemed to want Alec Guinness in every film he made, and uh, uh, even though they never really got along that well. And um, before Alec turned up, he, he came, he turned up quite a few months after we started shooting, and uh, um, David said to me one night, I think Alec's arriving, so I'd like you to look after him, because I'm, I can't possibly talk to him. I just, I just, I just can't, I just don't want to know about this. And so, uh, funny to cast him and then not want to talk to him. But anyway, um, Alec arrived and said, I don't want to talk to David, so, so it was fine. So I took, I had dinner with Alec a lot. And, but they sort of really admired each other and they sort of loved each other. They'd done so many films together and they very frequently had crossnesses, but it was never really very serious and uh, they really loved each other. I mean, Alec left A Bridge on the River Choir without saying goodbye to David. And they didn't speak for another, I don't know how many years, until he did uh, Lawrence of Arabia. <laughs> and it was, uh, Alec was always going to do a David Lean picture if he was asked. There was no question of that. Peggy and Art and I thought it was rather strange. We were doing a film in India and we had a, a, a British gentleman playing an Indian when everyone else was Indian. And I remember Alec coming down, I, I was having breakfast, and Alec came down and said, good morning, I said, good morning. He said, I had a terrible night last night. I wrote a letter to David, and I was going to be on the next flight home, but I, I chickened out, and, and he stayed, but he, he wasn't happy. I think Alec refused to do some dance at the end of the film, which drove, which drove David pretty insane, and they didn't talk for a long time afterwards. Alec just said, I, can't, I just can't dance. He said, I shouldn't be dressed up as an Indian anyway, and I, he wants me to dance, I can't do it. <laughs> but, you know, there you go. Um, I thought it was fine. I thought his performance was extraordinary in a funny way. It sort of kind of works for me, because God believe is, in my opinion, doesn't really exist. What, what, he's something that's come out of the thin air, really. Victor Banerjee was, was somebody that was suggested to us by Sajid Ray, and uh, David took a long time to make up his mind about him. David gave Victor quite a hard time, I think, because he, he didn't feel he was Indian enough, which was, <laughs> wasn't very helpful, I don't think. And I, I think David was wanting a sort of, um, a bit of, it seemed he was trying to sort of encourage him to be more stereotypical, in a sense. Um, and I think, I think, I mean, it was a huge part. Uh, I think Victor had, had quite a hard time in some ways. There was always a debate going on, and Victor was very, very strong about holding on to his character and what he wanted from the character, and, and to play, to play Dr. Aziz with passion and, and, and integrity and righteousness. David, on the other hand, just probably wanted him just to say the frigging lines, you know. It was that clash of two different schools. You had the old school of acting, and you had this modern naturalistic acting that wanted to break through, you know, and a lot of us wanted to do that. But you're, you know, as young actors, you, you, you've got to take stuff seriously here, you know, you're going to be asked to deliver. You're looking around and there's Dame Peggy Ashcroft, 
and you know Alec Guinness you know so you're on top of your game and watching them you realize oh I see this is the kind of game it really is that sort of concentrated and focused and thought through and and it just it was just a delight I think the 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 whole cast were just wonderful and I had mindfully um, made sure that any actor that came out to India really wanted to go to India. And I told David that. And he was thrilled. I said, you're not having anybody there that we wouldn't want at a party. And that's what you want from great company of actors. 